How you doing guys? Welcome back. It's LSP. It's currently the 28th of June 2022. So I'm going to be looking at Binance today and I want to kind of guide you through um, a couple of scenarios that could be unfolding uh, and what I'm personally looking for, you know, in terms of engaging with Binance. Where am I looking to buy? Where am I looking to, you know, kind of accumulate, get back into Binance? Because currently all of my money is sitting in fiat and I'm waiting for that opportune moment when the market does something that I feel confident in, and then I can start to engage again. So let's get over to the charts. We're going to predominantly focus on Binance today. Um, Bitcoin's a little bit flat, so I want to focus on Binance because it's showing a, you know, a little bit of a you know upward movement, and it's showing signs that it could potentially you know be um, doing some things that I like, um, and I want to start to pay attention to these and see what happens you know kind of going forward and what the market's going to do over the next couple of weeks or so. All right. So currently we are getting um, a couple of, you know, a couple of uh, green candles, right? So last week was pretty decent. This week seems like it wants to drive towards that 250 level, which we've had on our chart for quite some time. If we just drop down to the daily chart, we can see that price um, took out this low. We had a really nice move, a reversal, price comes up. And just on that candle right there, as it takes out this, you know, eh, I'm not going to call it a swing high, but just as it takes out this section just here this little high and starts to eat into the imbalance it, sh it it started to stabilize right even when we had a little drop on bitcoin binance didn't really follow suit as much now if you look at the fractal picture of both of those say four hour hourly charts they kind of look identical but Bitcoin's a little bit sort of muted. It's a bit slow, right? Binance has been a little bit more exaggerated in its movement, which is showing, you know, the, the small subtle nuances that price may want to pop into 250 and potentially 260. Okay. Now the question is, what do you do with all of this information? It's very easy to look at all of this and say, well, it wouldn't it have been better to kind of pick it up at sort of 185 or 187. Yes, absolutely. But here's the thing. It, that wouldn't have been safe. Because I still feel that the market may potentially drop, snap down, maybe go to sort of 17 to 15K on Bitcoin. So 17,000 to 15,000, that sort of range, absorb all of that liquidity and then snap back very quickly. That's the ideal scenario. That's what we really, really, you know, that's what we really want to see. We want to see Bitcoin drop very quickly and reverse very quickly and then start to, you know, gain some momentum back to the upside. When that happens, it's just a pure bull trap. Uh, sorry, it's a, it's a pure bear trap. It's like it snaps down. Just think of it as a, as a stop run, you know, price snaps down there, stops everybody out and then starts to run in the opposite direction, right? We've seen it many, many times. So with that said, because I feel that that's still going to happen. My thinking has to be along the lines of, I'm not looking to engage with Binance right now at these levels. I'm looking for reasons that price is confirming it's done what it needs to do as it's rallying. So it can finally just drop, do what it needs to do in terms of that weekly chart, you know, potentially get down to sort of 150, which is the ideal scenario. This is what I'm personally looking for. And then I can start to think about picking up some Binance down at these levels. Um, at the moment, there is a lot of upside movement, you know, um, potential, right? We could very well, and when I say a lot of upside movement, I'm just talking about this kind of rally here. We could very well get a rally like this, you know, a sort of three week rally, which puts us roughly around about sort of 275 to 280. That's the ideal scenario because then we'll start to stabilize. And depending on how long this takes, and I'll just be really, really clear about something. This may take weeks and weeks and weeks, you know, going into the summer, even, you know, into the fall before Binance really starts to get to that point where, we, you know, we can see those nuances that say, yeah, this is probably going to drop. The broader market's probably going to drop. And we, you know, we may very well see that 150 level. That's, that's what we need to be paying attention to. I don't really care how long this takes. My concern is, can I can you know can I get Binance at 150 and what's the likelihood that that's going to happen? If the likelihood of that happening based on what I'm seeing in the analysis that I'm doing is very high, then I don't mind waiting. Now, if the likelihood is that that's not going to happen and we may potentially start to stabilize and then kind of grind a little bit higher, you know, pull back a little bit, grind a little bit, pull back a little bit, you know, then that objective changes you know and then i'll start to think about okay what range do i have to work with so if we go over to the charts and i start to see signs that price is kind of going like this sideways 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 then the range we have to play with is anywhere between sort of 200 to around about 2 280 right now again when you look at the potential of binance yeah um, even as high as this swing high up here you're talking about 460 there's a lot of a lot of movement that we could potentially get on a nice bull run yeah 
If that happens, that potential is pretty decent. Yeah, even if we are picking up Binance between 200 and roughly 280. I wouldn't mind picking up Binance roughly around this area, you know, and then get a really nice run all the way to 460. That's pretty decent, right? So bear that in mind, bear that in mind. So going forward, I just want to quickly drop to the hourly chart and I just want to, we use the four hour actually, and I just want to show you, you can see this kind of drop takes out this low, starts to grind. You've got buy side pickup, buy side pickup. Hmm. Uh, not so much there, a little bit of a grinding, you know, uh, con consolidation, very tight consolidation, to be fair. Um, and you can almost you can almost see that last push into sort of 250. The reaction is going to be very interesting. There is a level over here, you know, between sort of 260 and 280 where price is going to find some sensitivity. It's not just going to be an explosive move. The fact that that candle right there took these highs out, you know, is not a great thing. Um, that would be brilliant if we're in a bull market. But right now we're not. You know, so that momentum as it starts to run, um, it's not going to take this into consideration. So we would need a really strong bull run, okay, for Binance to get, you know, through all of this mess up here, okay, and that's purely based on that one tail right there, that candle, that wick. Um, but I digress. The point being, I'm looking to be very, very patient with the markets. I still feel. OK, that there is the potential for the market to drop drastically out of nowhere. This is why I'm being super cautious. This is why I'm being very, very patient. And with that said, I hope this video helps to kind of guide um, a lot of you into the kind of process that I go through, the thinking that I go through, you know, and the very methodical nature that I have when it comes to, you know, engaging with financial markets. Because again, as I've said many, many times, we're professionals. We're not here to throw our money into the market. We're here to take money from the market big, big distinction that needs to be made there. And with all of that said, I hope everyone's having an absolutely fantastic day or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to catching up with you in the next update. All the best. Take care.